Welcome to this week's episode of Making the Shift from RN to NP. I'm Katie Vogelar, nurse practitioner. In this limited podcast series, we'll explore what it's really like to make the transition from RN to NP. At Hippo Education, we work on real world, practice changing guidance to help you become the best NP you can be. For being a listener, we'd love to share our free NP clinical resource guide with you. You can download this at hippoed.com slash making the shift. Now let's get started. Most new grads get into their first jobs, and within a couple weeks on the job, a patient situation pops up, and it makes them think, did I really learn that in school? But what happens when you really didn't learn everything you need to know for your first job out of school? My guest today, Rachel, navigated this exact same situation. Rachel Berry graduated from an FNP program in 2021, and she started her first job not in family medicine or primary care, but in a specialty clinic. Rachel, I'm really excited to talk about this with you today. Thank you, Katie. Excited to be here. Rachel, tell me about your first job and why did you choose to go into a specialty instead of starting out in primary care or family medicine? Yeah, that's a great question, Katie. I'd say in some ways I was born into it. My dad is a cardiovascular surgeon, so I grew up standing over the drape, watching him do surgery and then rounding with him on patients on Sunday mornings before church. And I had this love for the heart that just continued to grow over time and um, really came to fruition in nursing school. I was really captivated with the heart and specialized in it in my nursing career. And then that's really what motivated me to go on and become a nurse practitioner. I wanted to enrich my learning and I wanted to use my degree as a springboard for being able to further care for patients in the cardiovascular specialty. I really love that you built on your experience and your passion, your background um, as a a CT surgeon's daughter, and you built on those experiences as a nurse. And then again, uh, that drove you to go to NP school. And that's one of the things I actually love about being an NP is that we can build upon our experiences and our passions as nurses and, um, and build upon those skills. And I think that's what makes being an NP really unique. But what was challenging about starting off in cardiology in this new role as an NP and not just a nurse? There was a lot that was challenging. I would say the biggest, it was a very steep learning curve um, because I was hit with two truths pretty much right off the bat that bedside nursing is very different from being a provider. And then even though I had a pretty strong background in the cardiovascular specialty as a bedside nurse, and could anticipate what doctors were going to be ordering and nurse practitioners. It was another thing to be stepping into the role of provider myself and calling the shots. And so I think my first job really helped to um, prepare me for a career as a cardiology nurse practitioner. It was definitely, it took quite a while to feel like I was somewhat grasping what I was doing. Yes. Stepping into the role of the clinician after you've been a nurse can be really challenging. It is really different to be the one writing the prescription or putting in the orders compared to the one that's receiving them and carrying them out. So what did you do in that first job to make that transition easier for yourself? Yeah. One of the things that was really helpful is during school, I had the opportunity to do a specialty rotation Um, in a cardiovascular inpatient outpatient setting. So I got to work alongside um, cardiovascular NPs in different subsets, whether it be advanced heart failure therapies or EP or general cardiology. So that was really helpful. Um, So I would recommend, I mean, if you're thinking of going into a specialty, definitely um, see if your school will allow you to do something like that because it was really helpful for me. Um, And then I also continued to work in the CVICU uh, during school, and that was really helpful because I would dig into my patient's charts that much more and start thinking along the lines of, if I was the provider for this patient, how would I be managing their care? I picked the brains of 
the doctors and nurse practitioners that I worked with and asked them how they arrived at a certain diagnosis or a treatment plan. And that kind of helped me start to think more along the lines of what a provider would do. And then the other thing that was really helpful for me is my school actually had the opportunity to do an in-depth course on EKG interpretation, which was really helpful. And then I did different CME courses throughout school that were geared towards cardiology, whether it be hypertension management, cholesterol management, different things like that. I really love that it sounds like you had this plan from the very beginning. You are going to be a cardiology NP, so much so that you probably had to, you know, seek out some clinical rotations in cardiology. That is such good advice for somebody that's looking to go to be in a specialty after they graduate. If you could go back, go back to school, whether you, you might not want to, but go back in time to your last semester in NP school and uh, talk to yourself, give yourself advice for those last six months before you start your first job. What would that be? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say really use the resources you have readily available to you. Um, in nursing school, you have incredible professors or nurse practitioner school, rather. You have incredible professors, your dean, they're all uh, there for you and want to see you succeed. And so using them, asking them questions, picking their brains about if you're thinking about doing a specialty, um, and then using your resources as well just through your school, your library databases, being able to look up scholarly journals and enrich your knowledge in ways that after you leave school, you won't have access to those things like you are when you're in school and for free, which is great. Um, something else I would recommend, and I talked a little bit about it already, but being a self-learner really um, and adopting that not just for school, but recognizing being in medicine, you are choosing to be a lifelong learner. And so doing CME courses, um, reading books that may be helpful, um, different scholarly journals, things like that. Um, and then I would say building connections. One of the things I did was when I was in that specialty rotation, I made connections with a couple of my preceptors that I really connected with, and I still keep in touch with them. And actually in transitioning from my first job to my second, I really reconnected with those connections because they were in a similar subspecialty as me. So I was able to talk with them about then, you know, opportunities to continue to grow and prepare for my next job. So things like that would be really helpful. Rachel, I love what you shared that when we sign up to be in medicine, we sign up to be lifelong learners. And that's something that surprised me when I graduated from my FNP program and was preparing to work in the emergency department. I spent a lot of time studying. I realized very quickly I did not learn everything I needed to learn in school. And so I had to supplement that. But even when I was studying, preparing, and trying to prepare the best I could, there were still times that I walked into a shift and, and I struggled with imposter syndrome. And I don't think I'm alone in that. So how did that show up for you in this first job? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's great to break awareness to and put words around what it is because I definitely didn't realize what imposter syndrome was at the time, but it is exactly what I was going through. It's difficult stepping into a role, especially the first couple of months out of MP school that's so different and that can be so daunting it's difficult even sometimes to not want to manage the patient as a bedside nurse in a crisis rather than manage the patient, which is important. And so I would say those first few months were the most difficult in that regard. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a struggle for sure, um, but it gets better with time. What did you do when you we're pulling up to work, struggling with those feelings of, of, am I enough? Did I learn this in school? Should I really be doing this job? Why are they letting me take care of these patients? What did you do to help yourself get through that? Yeah. One of the biggest things I did was surrounding myself with people who would remind me of the truth. And one of those was my dean. I still keep in touch with her really closely. Another was my husband and some of the other people around me that helped to remind me of the truth when I felt inadequate, especially after I made my first mistake, um, which if you're in medicine long enough, it's not an if you will, but it's when you will make your first mistake. 
And so that was pretty crushing. And yet remembering that I need to take things one step at a time and just learn from it. And then I also really realized the value in self-care, whether it be going on a hike. I lived in Colorado at the time, so I would hike or go out for a walk with my, my dog and my husband. But being outside, going for a run, doing something that helped me to have more mental clarity so that when I did drive up to work the next day, um, I felt much more prepared for the day. I think that is such good practical advice, Rachel, for any new grad, anyone in their first couple years of of work as a nurse practitioner, new nurse practitioner. Um, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. I think what you shared today is going to be really beneficial for those NPs that are maybe uh, generally trained. They've gone to a broad generalist education, but are starting in a specialty clinic that they maybe don't feel fully prepared for. What would be your last sort of bit of advice or your wisdom for NPs who are making that transition from nurse to nurse practitioner? Yeah. Remember that you're enough. Remember that you worked really hard to get this far and multiple people felt you were adequate because you got as far as you got. You went through school. Now you're graduating. If you're graduating, I don't know where you are in your NP journey. And so you've already proven that you're enough and that you're capable. Um, Be prepared to be a lifelong learner. Don't be discouraged by the fact that you will never completely arrive and that's okay. Anyone who tells you otherwise, I wouldn't trust them. (laughs) And, um, And then I'd say, Be prepared to dig in and to grow and to work really hard and to just take it one step at a time and remember that the transition is tough, but so are you and it's going to be great. Man, that's great. I wish I could have that on repeat before I go to a clinical shift. Thank you, (laughs) Rachel, so much for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Katie. Thanks for listening to this episode of Making the Shift from RN to NP. Be sure to head to hippoed.com slash making the shift to get your free NP clinical resource guide. Visit hippoed.com slash NP to explore even more education from Hippo to make your transition from RN to NP as smooth as possible.